Good morning. My name is Al Koritz. I'm Applications and Service Manager at Electromicroscopy Sciences. Today I'd like to show you how to set up your EMS 7000 SMZ2 tissue slicer. First we'll go through all the components uh, that comes in the accessory boxes and then we'll go through a step-by-step -step installation of all those accessories required and setting up the unit uh, so you're able to make your first slices of your chosen tissue. First let's have a look at the items that are on the left hand side of the main unit. We have a power cord for your local uh, uh, receptacle in the United States. Uh, the system runs on 115 volts uh, 60 Hertz. Uh, there's a port on the back of the instrument which allows you to set uh, to your local uh, voltage. I'll show you that uh, in a moment. This is a drain line and clamp which attaches to the outlet of the ice bath which comes with the unit. This is all part of the sample holder assembly. You just simply slip the hose on the fitting and then slip the hose through so it protrudes out the bottom And this way you can use this as a clamp to prevent uh, melted ice water uh, flowing out unless you want to do so. Normally the, the stage tray here has the actual specimen holder trough magnetically mounted and you can slide this back and forth to adjust it uh, to where you want it. This is filled with ice which negates the expense and complexity of the uh, thermal uh, cooling bath uh, accessory cooling stage. Um, I find that filling this trough with crushed ice and the stainless steel manufacturer of the uh, specimen uh, and buffer uh, holding tray is quite good. You can get the temperatures uh, very low. As the ice melts, you can use this clamp uh, to release the water so you can uh, put more crushed ice in uh, without having a, a water overflow. Uh, this item is a bubbler so you can attach this to the tray like so and have oxygen bubbled into your buffer solution. I'll show you how this all mounts on the uh, instrument in another segment. In the shipping container, you'll find four handles uh, that have a threaded fitting on one end and a black uh, plastic uh, 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 handle. And these conveniently screw into the holes that are drilled and tapped on the side of the instrument. The instrument has considerable mass. This is to 
dampened vibration that is not uh, that actually hampers the, the quality of your section you're cutting. There's four of them. There's two on either side. Uh, I don't think this requires much more explanation than this. It is best to have, the reason why it's laid out this way, with two handles on either side, it's best to have a two-person carry uh, if you're going to move the uh, instrument uh, around. It's really quite uh, massive um, and uh, it's really safer for both you and the instrument if two people are involved in, in moving it from place to place. Once the instrument is where you want it, you simply unscrew the handle and you can store it uh, till you need it again. There's a blue accessory box which comes with the instrument. It has all the tools and accessories you need to successfully set up and operate the SMZ2 uh, slicer. I will point out uh, some of these uh, parts now. Uh, you will see a closer view of these parts as the video unfolds. Uh, first thing that I'll take out and show is this is the Z-axis or, or easy uh, calibration system that we use for calibrating the Z deflection of the blade. The 7000 SMZ2 has a built-in calibration system to minimize the Z deflection of the knife blade uh, to the submicron length level so you have less damage to the live tissue that you're sectioning. Uh, we'll investigate this further later on in the video. Here we just have various uh, tools used in setting up the instrument, some hex drivers, a Phillips head screwdriver, This is a safety device which you can insert the blade and then use the, the whole holder to install the blade safely or remove the blade safely from the knife holding mechanism uh, which I'll introduce you to uh, along the way. Uh, it's a safety device so you don't uh, cut yourself a uh, very important uh, item. This is a handling tool for this stage. This allows you to insert or remove the stage from its mounting place in the stainless steel buffer tray. And that is a fixed stage that I just showed you where the specimen cannot be tilted. This stage comes with another Allen key, which is sort of hidden with it. And this stage, you can loosen the Allen screw and you can tilt the stage to get a better alignment with the tissue, your section, and the knife blade. And you can see the holes for the set screws or grub screws uh, to allow you to make that uh, adjustment. Just stick that right there. 
This is a safety guard which you can put over the entire knife assembly when you have a knife installed. Again, this is a safety feature to prevent you from cutting yourself. And anybody who's done tissue slices, slicers, or have worked with razor blades in the laboratory, um, yeah, accidents do happen. Uh, that's to help mitigate uh, that situation. This is the knife holder assembly. And this is just a little notification. Um, on the knife holder assembly, uh, one set of screws is your normal uh, right hand uh, thread. The other one is a left-hand thread. Um, it's important that you remember this uh, because if you try to tighten or untighten and you're turning it in the wrong direction, these are very, very small, tiny metric screws uh, that you can see uh, here in this little plastic bag. Um, they're easy to turn the heads off or in, and break. And that's all uh, uh, spare hardware uh, in case you lose or break a screw. So let me remove the knife holder assembly from the bag. Uh, a couple of the mounting screws uh, came out, but that's fine. Uh, here's the left hand thread screw, here's the right hand thread screw, and you slide the blade uh, underneath, tighten it down using uh, the special blade uh, uh, holder so you can protect yourself from cuts. And uh, this thing will magnetically uh, cover that whole assembly when a knife is installed so you don't hurt yourself. This assembly mounts to the front of the cutting arm via three Phillips screws. One, uh, two, and three is missing. This set screw, or grub screw, uh, when you loosen this lower uh, screw, allows you to adjust the, the knife so you can get with the calibration system here. This goes uh, down in there. It vibrates back and forth. This allows you to adjust the screw and the set screw so you can get a minimization of the z-axis deflection of the knife. More on that later. In the box here, you get uh, the appropriate uh, stainless steel blades uh, that can be used in a knife holder, uh, plus two ceramic blades. The ceramic blades really, really are quite sharp and very durable. Um, uh, I love using them because it allows uh, less damage to the tissue. Uh, the stainless steel blades are specially uh, prepared for use with the slicer. The edges are much finer than any of the other uh, blades uh, on the market. These are specially processed. Um, I can link you or send you a PDF of why it's best to use these particular stainless steel blades in your slicer. Also, the holder is meant um, to hold these blades. Um, you would have trouble installing um, other, uh, other types of razor blades or cutting edges. Uh, another important uh, feature that you would notice 
once this is mounted, the blade angle is fixed at the optimum cutting angle. Uh, I've been using tissue slicers since 1979. Um, I almost never change the cutting angle and uh, the 7000 SMZ2 is my personally uh, favorite uh, uh, tissue slicer. Uh, this is all optimized to give you the best uh, slices of tissue um, well beyond uh, any of the other systems that I've uh, been able to use including competitive systems. This is what the rear of the unit looks like. Um, there's a cooling fan and cooling vents. There is a warning sticker and label, uh, which is over the outlet. And this is to make sure that uh, you set the correct uh, voltage before plugging the system into your wall receptacle. Um, many times um, I've seen in, here in the U.S. that uh, it is inadvertently set at the factory uh, incorrectly. Customer plugs it into 110 volts the machine is expecting 220 volts or higher and it doesn't operate and it's just simply uh, changing the voltage selector switch. Here's a close-up of the voltage selector switch and the mains switch for the uh, unit and you can see that the 110 to 120 volt uh, uh, is lined up with the uh, triangle. That means that the unit is set to uh, US voltage standards, 110 to 120 volts BAC. If it's in the incorrect position, you can consult the manual and uh, basically this just pops out uh, and you reverse it uh, and it correctly selects the voltage. But since the voltage is in the correct position already, there's no reason to disassemble that and swap it around for demonstration purposes. On the right hand side of the machine is the port that's used for the OptiCal, which is the device which allows you to minimize the z-axis deflection of your knife blade by adjusting the knife holder and the plug is keyed in a particular way, so there's only one way that you can insert it correctly. Thusly, uh, please note uh, on the connector, there's a little arrow. I hope you can see that. Uh, uh, that aligns with the up position over here and then the OptiCal gets mounted on the stage which we will talk about later. Alright, on the front side of the unit uh, uh, I've now plugged uh, the system into the receptacle and powered the instrument up. Uh, another important thing to uh, recognizes there's an emergency stop button here um, and sometimes in shipping that gets depressed and the instrument even though you flip the switch in the back uh, will not come on. Uh, to reset the power to the instrument uh, you just rotate the red outer knob of the emergency safety switch uh, or emergency stop switch uh, and the instrument powers up. Um, we're just going to overview some of the items and not get into the menu in detail. Um, you can assign different users uh, to the uh, processor, to the computer. 
this way, different people in your lab may have different settings, which is optimal for their use. In this way, those can be stored and uh, other users can uh, have their own particular settings. Or if you're a solo user, depending on what you're doing, you might have some different settings which uh, you can pre-assign uh, uh, and easily switch back and forth. Um, this is the load bath uh, button which lowers the stage to its most furthest down position so you can clear the knife and get the uh, the whole stage tray on and off uh, with some ease. Um, this lever right here allows you to slide the ice bath uh, portion uh, onto the unit and to release it you just pull the lever and it easily slides off. Auto repeat is a function which allows you to do repeat slicing under the same conditions. Uh, this way the instrument will automatically uh, serially slice your tissue um, and you don't have to press the start or stop button or slice on and off button which is here. Uh, you don't have to return uh, the cutting arm to the rear. Um, this is the advanced button. You press to illuminate and it will allow you to uh, uh, set the advance. Uh, this will allow you to slew the height uh, of the uh, stage up and down. Uh, some important things to notice is the stage with your tissue is incremented up closer to the blade which is mounted up here which I'll show you and the cutting arm uh, vibrates back and forth at uh, a particular frequency and rate uh, which you can set in the user panel. The, the knife holder is mounted to the front of the unit using the supplied screws and screwdrivers. I just leave them sort of loose until I get all three in position. Okay, and once again, we're making these snug. Uh, let's not uh, over-tighten them, There's just so it is very firmly tightened. And remember that uh, this is a right-hand thread screw, and this is a left-hand thread screw. So when you uh, loosen them, Normally in the U.S. it's righty-tighty, so as I turn it to the right, it's, it's tightening down on the blade. Turn it to the left, it's loosey, so lefty-loosey, it's sort of a, uh, an easy-to-remember mnemonic. And on this side, though, in order to tighten it, you turn it to the left instead of the right. So this is the opposite thread, and this is where you can inadvertently mess up and over tighten the screw by thinking that you're loosening it uh, uh, by turning it to the left and you can break the head off the screw and then it takes a little effort to get the remaining part of the screw out of the threads and, and this is why we provide spares not only for that reason but 
Also, the fact that they're small and if you drop them on the floor, they may roll into some inaccessible place. Now let's power the system up and take a look at the uh, display and menu areas. So it comes up with a, a number of users that you can up and down arrow key and select uh, uh, the particular user ID that, that people assign, either their first name or last name or, or whatever. Then you press menu. Um, and it gives you the main menu. Might I add that uh, all while it's in the user function, all the knobs and buttons are disabled, so you won't be able to use those. So we're gonna go through and have a look at all these different uh, uh, settings, uh, frequency, amplitude, section thickness, advanced speed, Right now it's in manual slice mode. Uh, we'll go through the whole uh, system. Um, press menu once and it gives you uh, the ability to change the frequency within the, the given range of the instrument. Press menu again to highlight the whole thing. You can move it down. You can change the amplitude uh, up and down. Uh, within a range inside the manual, there's a chart that shows you a matrix where you can uh, change the, uh, the amplitude values and frequency values within a particular area. And yes, if you linger too long, it will drop out of menu mode and uh, go into another mode. So here you can uh, increment uh, up and down uh, the section thickness, hit menu again, advances to tens and then to hundreds of microns. Um, we're going to leave that the way it is. Uh, the next selection is exit menu, uh, change user. If you select this, you can uh, change uh, whatever user you are on and go back. Um, blade alignment is part of the OptiCalc system, which we'll talk about in a little while. Settings gives you LCD brightness and contrast, and whether or not you want the cutting section, the sectioning to stop at the end of the travel or at the beginning of the travel. Um, I leave that. Uh, uh, at the default uh, uh, auto stop at end and you can edit the usernames uh, as desired. You can cancel and exit, um, exit menu, uh, and then you have about which tells you what it is as well as the software revision, the serial number, and the build date. On the front panel, we have a number of buttons. Uh, load bath, which will raise and lower the stage uh, to the load or unload position. Auto repeat, we'll get to later. This will allow you to cut uh, sections, repeat uh, semi-automatically. Uh, what I mean by semi-automatically, you press start. And then when it gets to the end of uh, the cutting window, you press return. Um, advance will allow you to set uh, a cutting window. Height changes the height of the, the stage. Um, we'll talk about all that in just a moment. Uh, um, so I will move the camera back a little bit so you can see when I press load stage, it's automatically going to its lowest position. So you can load the bath. Now I've sort of preloaded uh, the metal tray and the plastic tray and that slides in on a dovetail and that locks the stage in, into place. 
You also have the option of sliding this a little forward and back, uh, depending on, on what you want to cut. I have the tilt stage uh, mounted uh, inside the uh, buffer chamber. Uh, I have the blade mounted. Um, I'm not going to mount the blade, but I am going to show you uh, what your typical uh, uh, slicer settings are. Um, the stage cannot be, can now be loaded or unloaded. Uh, so now it will return to the home position. You can see it going up. And now the screen comes back to your typical uh, slice uh, mode. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, uh, in completely manual mode, you can select the, uh, a very, very fine increment in millimeters per second slicing speed. Let's just leave it at one millimeters uh, and press slice. And you can see that the cutting head is oscillating and the cutting arm is moving forward. It will go to the end of its natural travel. There's limit switches inside which limit how far it could go. By now, of course, we would have cut through whatever was on the stage. When it comes to the end, in manual mode, press return. The arm returns. And the stage increments up. In this case, 200 microns, the way I have it set. Uh, one of the beautiful features about this is you're not leaking uh, saline buffer into the hardware of your instrument, uh, thus protecting its life. Uh, um, systems that have some sort of feed through which pushes the stage up through the bath are notoriously prone to leakage and the salts damage the uh, hardware underneath. So that was a, uh, a simple manual slice. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to set the turn the advance button on. I am going to adjust the advance speed to, to two millimeters per second. And I am going to start slice. You notice it is not vibrating. All I'm doing is I moved it forward to my starting cutting position because if you're using a mouse brain or something, this is a large platform, you don't want to waste time going back and forth. So you bring the, the knife blade close to the front ed edge of the tissue that you're cutting. Um, you press uh, slice, it brings it forward. You press slice again, it stops it. You turn the advance light off and that will set the rear cutting window. So now you can hit slice and we're still in manual mode so we have to make it advance. It will go to all the way to the end of the cutting stroke or whenever you stop it. So for brevity I stopped it here. So now when I press return it will go back to the beginning of the cutting stroke, increase another 200 micron, the green light comes back on, we press slice, and now it will automatically slice through the brain and stop at that point at which we stopped it before. Okay, so this is semi-automatic mode.
And again, it advances the stage up 200 microns. So now we're going to put it in auto meet repeat mode. Once we've set a cutting window, it won't accept it until you do those steps that I just showed you on how to do a starting cutting window and an ending cutting window. And now if you press uh, uh, slice, oh, we have to set an advanced speed here. So let's set it to one millimeter per second. It will go all the way forward to the end of the cutting stroke at which you set and stop and you can fish out your brain section or whatever you're cutting and move it to an, a separate container. Uh, press return. And now press slice and raise your advanced speed again okay now I'm going to stop it here and hit return And notice now it keeps the advance speed, so it will automatically do this time and time again until you've completely sectioned through your tissue and then you would hit load bath and lower it and you put the guard over the knife. So it will reach the end of the cutting window, hit return, and away we go. Now if you hit this again, you can hit auto repeat, and with the up and down arrow keys, you can slice at that preset speed up to nine, uh, 99 sections and it will automatically repeat this profile again and again until you stop it and of course it's never a bad a good idea to leave a cutting instrument running unattended but this allows you to automate the cutting function of the machine and fish out your section and move it to a, uh, a proper container. Uh, like our net wells, which are used for free-floating section staining, uh, you can find those in the catalog. So this will continue to go uh, until it completes the number of cycles that you pre-entered and if for any reason you want to stop you hit stop it says slices halt press slice to continue return to abort so we're going to abort and we're going to shut auto repeat off and now we're going to hit load bath and so you have to hold it and now display is moving to the bath load position you can see the stage going down the arm will retract and now you can easily remove the bath and tray uh, and remount the sample